Welcome to this edition of ARTV News. I'm Hannah Whitehead. And I'm Naomi Newcomb. This show will feature our regular news, what's going on, live theatre and exhibitions. And later on, I'll feature The Stranger Studio and Gallery. And finally, ARTV Magazine with Morgan Ray. The Science Gallery Melbourne explores the essence of collective behaviour and asks why we are drawn to be part of a pack. Part exhibition, part experiment. Swarm is the second exhibition to be launched in the Science Gallery Melbourne's new purpose-built museum space. Curated by Science Gallery Melbourne director, Dr. Ryan Jeffries, together with head of curatorial Tilly Bolin, a panel of expert advisors, and a curatorial team of young people. Swarm features 16 large-scale installations from across the globe. Each explores a range of themes related to collective behaviour. From the pleasures and perils of our increasing daily digital connections, the power that comes with political and social protest, the highly social world of insects, and how artificial intelligence and new technologies are replicating swarming behaviour. Swarm is on now and finishes on the 3rd of December. It is located on the corner of Swanston and Grattan Street at the University of Melbourne. Following the award-winning digital production, JSMR, an ASMR and storytelling experience, Jessica Stanley is bringing unique sensory delights to the Fridge Hub directly to the audience on stage. By including the perfect social commentary and humour into the format of her show, Jessica Stanley provides a unique experience for the JSMR visitors. Step away from the bar and right into a cosy little alcove where Stanley will be waiting. Visitors will need to put on some wireless headphones. Relax and enjoy the sensation of standard ASMR combined with Stanley's personal bizarre, affecting and hypnotic touch. JSMR will be starting on the 6th of October to the 21st of October. Tickets range from $10 to $25. For more information, visit www.melbournefringe.com.au. Installation artist and filmmaker Natasha Johns Messenger has been awarded the $300,000 Southern Way McKellen Commission 2023 for her sculpture project Compass 23. The new sculpture is set to be installed on the Peninsula Link Freeway in Melbourne Southeast in October 2023 as part of an award-winning public art program along the freeway. Compass 23 comprises a line drawing sculptural proposition comprising 12 metre high, simple, powder coated and stainless steel geometric structures that evoke volume and disorientation. After four years on display, the artwork will be relocated to McKellen as part of its permanent outdoor sculpture collection. Award-winning director Kate Champion wowed the crowds in New York and London. She now brings Girls and Boys by Dennis Kelly to the Melbourne Theatre Company for the very first time. The one-woman show about a smart, witty woman and a funny, passionate man falling in love with its shocking and universal touch points, sounds all too common. Described as gripping by The Observer UK and remarkable, the most moving play I've seen for years in the Arts Desk UK, Girls and Boys comes to the Melbourne Theatre Company at the Arts Centre Melbourne between October 21st and November 26th. For more information, visit artscentremelbourne.com.au. The Vegout Community Gardens in St Kilda will once again host the Big Sculpture Exhibition in November this year. The exhibition was originally launched in 2019 by the then Arts Minister, Martin Foley, but the event was cancelled in 2021 because of COVID lockdowns. The Big Sculpture Biennale 2022 will present over $15,000 in value and prizes, but all entries have to be in before 2nd of September 2022. The exhibition will be on the 5th of November and close on the 11th of December. For further information, go to vegout.org.au and click onto the big sculpture. We've all heard of Hosea Lane, but the new Flash Forward exhibition will explore the hidden potential in some of Melbourne's lesser known laneways through lighting, music and creative installations. Showcasing Melbourne's creative culture through a connected network of laneways across the city, the exhibition will present 40 art installations, 40 albums and stage 40 gigs across the city. Experience the city like never before, with all new work and all for free. For more information and a map of the laneways involved, visit flashforward.com. 
The Art Centre for Contemporary Art, otherwise known as ACCA, is continuing with its highlight of significant, influential Australian artists with Paul Yore, World Made Flesh. This exhibition will present works of the past 15 years, including quilts and needlework, banners, pennants, collage, and large-scale mixed-media installations. The Gippsland-based artist engages with the histories of religious art, queer identity, pop culture, and neoliberal capitalism, structured around his five purpose-designed bodies of work. Signs, Embodiment, Manifesto, The Horizon, and World Made Flesh. The exhibition will run from September 23rd through to November 20th at the Australian Centre for Contemporary Art. For more information, visit acca.melbourne. Melbourne Arts Centre has announced that they will partner with Queensland Performing Arts Centre to deliver an accredited industry training program for arts technical crews worth $750,000. It is the first collaborative program since COVID and seeks to connect people in an industry that is in great demand. Industry relevant stage production skills training is scarce or non-existent, according to Vincent Fairfax Family Foundation Chief Executive Officer Jenny Wheatley. The program is set to commence in early 2023. For more information, visit artcentermelbourne.com.au. Running since June until mid-November in Federation Square at ACME is the prestigious collection Light, Works from Tate's Collection, curated by Tate in the UK. The exhibition celebrates groundbreaking moments from over 200 years of art history, as well as the artists who harness this elemental force through a series of artistic expressions. There are more than 70 features, including must-see historical paintings by iconic artists. The paintings are juxtaposed against modern and contemporary forms of art. When viewed collectively, the pieces associate links across time, medium and style, projecting light onto the viewer's body and absorbing them into visions of luminosity. The exhibition is presented alongside the award-winning exhibition, The Story of the Moving Image. Tickets are available on the ACME website. Monet and Friends Alive will arrive at the Leo Melbourne on October 26 and provide a journey across Bohemian Paris and countryside France. This multi-century experience showcases the most influential and fascinating period in modern art, Impressionism. With works from Monet, Cezanne, Renault, Monet, and many more, Monet and Friends Alive is an explosion of life, light, and color designed to ignite all your senses through an immersive 360-degree experience. This new exhibition will provide a unique experience with light, sounds, smell, and even taste through the in-gallery dining experience, Café de Flore. Visitors, young and old, will be immersed in iconic scenes of water lilies, ballerinas, and urban life in the Belle Epoque. You can stroll, sit, and even lie down to take in a 40-minute show made up for more than 850 pieces of art. For those who want to express their inner artist, there will be a sketching zone where you can try your hand following a tutorial. The Lou Melbourne is Australia's first digital art gallery to bring masterpieces to life as they are projected throughout the 3000 square meters gallery and towering four stories tall. Modern and Friends Alive will replace the Cowan Van Gogh Alive experience which closes on October 9th. Tickets are on sale now through Ticketmaster. Melbourne, can you hear the bells? Regent Theatre brings you the biggest head of hair belonging to none other than Tracy Turnblad. Hairspray opened in Melbourne theatres this August and has already taken audience members by storm. Crowds have been raving about the pure fun this show brings, noting how they felt part of the production. The more we laughed, the more Shane Jacobson and Todd Bacchetti played to the audiences, says Maria Lindsay. Hairspray stars other fan favourites such as Rob Mills as Corny Collins and Rhonda Birchmore as Velma Von Tussel. Introducing Carmel Rodriguez, who has thrived in her role as Tracy Turnblad. Based on the original 1988 film of the same name, this romantic comedy has grown into a stage production, book and a 2007 remake. Set in the 1960s, the production follows a teenage girl, Tracy Turnblad, 
as she reaches for her dream to perform on the Colony Collins show. During Tracy's audition for the segment, she is picked on for her weight and features deemed unfit for stardom by Velma Von Tussel, who is the station manager. Velma's daughter Amber, who also goes to school with Tracy, bullies her inside and outside of the Corny Collins audition. Tracy refuses to let others bring her down and continues dancing and singing her way to the top. Through staying true to herself, Tracy makes her dreams a reality whilst finding love and friends in unexpected ways. With music written by Mark Sherman and paired with Scott Whitman's lyrics, Hairspray has received Tony nominations in 13 categories, winning a total of eight. Of these include Best Musical, Book, Score and Direction. Hairspray is currently playing at Melbourne's Regent Theatre until the 9th of October. Tickets range from $85 to $160. To secure your tickets, go to hairspraymusical.com.au. Peter Bazankes set up The Stranger's Studio and Gallery in November to explore another side of his photography in an artistic way. The images are structured in a way that you could step into the scene, but the way they're constructed is would be, do I want to step into that scene? Because you don't know what's around the corner or what's, what's outside the frame. So that's partly where the, the dystopian undertone comes from, is that you don't know what this space is. So you, and because it is uh, that liminal space, the road or path, you could imagine yourself there, but would you want to be there? Peter is an architecture and real estate photographer whose body of work represents his fascination with architecture and the urban environment. His work is good for the corporate world, as in large company boardrooms, big offices and reception areas. What the artwork does is reinterpret the urban environment. So what I do with my work is I strip out so it's all photographic work and I strip out elements that to me are unnecessary for the image or a distraction to it and sometimes I'll add in other elements. Um, and it, the foreground of all the images in this current body of work have uh, roads and paths and these are places we don't normally dwell in, they're called liminal spaces. Um, but also, uh, so the, the urban environment features large in the work but there's, always, there's often a little bit of nature, so it might be just a little bit of sky, a little bit of greenness. Um, colours are very subdued, uh, the lighting is very flat. Um, people sometimes say it looks like um, Jeffrey Smart and it's also been, uh, so someone's actually compared it, it, it feels like Jeffrey Smart but it has the intellect of Rick Amore uh, who's a slightly abstract uh, artist. So Peter, what are the benefits of companies purchasing your art? First thing I'd say is what it isn't, and it's not things like inspirational posters, like there's, you know, the ones that says no I in team, or uh, cliched photos like sunsets uh, and, and uh, nature uh, photographs or inspirational photos. Peter thinks it's important to display relative art that reflects what the business is about. With staff, it can uh, help to motivate them, uh, inspire them in their workplace. Um, it says to them also that this is not just some ordinary workplace that you roll up to, it's not some industrial cold environment. Uh, for clients, it can help convey something about the values of the organisation. Let's say you're a 150 year old law firm and you've got your um, wood panelled offices. Now you might have, a, say, a 19th century painting in there. And the thing that, that, they, that you might be trying to convey is that you're old, you're established, you're uh, conservative uh, and so on. But if you're a 150 year old bank, you may want to convey something different. And that is that you're a modern company, that you're progressive, that you understand your customers. The image is part of their branding, uh, but it shouldn't aim to show what they do. For example, the law firm wouldn't have a, an image of the scars of justice. Um, but say a tech company might, uh, that's progressive innovative might want to show work that, that is that, that is progressive and innovative. Large companies often need to employ outside assistance to find what works best for their brand. Often art consultants are employed and they will help determine the, the values of the company uh, and that person then may help to source and curate the, the artwork. 
In a smaller organisation it might be the, the principal of the company or the owner and that might be determined partly by their personal taste and their own values and what they're wanting to project. You can find Peter in the Stranger Gallery and Studio in St Kilda. Welcome, Ross, to ARTV. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. For the last 15 years, you've been a professional artist, correct? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that journey so far? Okay. Um, yeah, I went back to... I was studying in, like, 1998 at Monash. And 1999, left, and then worked for a few years in construction, actually. But then always wanted to go back and finish my degree. Ended up... I couldn't get... Um, like acknowledgement of my kind of prior study at Monash and then I applied for VCA, got into VCA in like 2005 when I was 34. And then, yeah, did my Bachelor of Painting there and then, yeah, just kind of, it just started like then and there really. I started, um, had a few shows whilst I was at VCA and then I've been exhibiting commercially, not like, I don't exhibit like incredibly regularly, but yeah. Mm -hmm like exhibiting in the fine art world for the last yeah, 15 years. Right, and you had a, a lovely live exhibition or part of the NGV, correct? Yeah, in 19, oh, yeah if, like rewinding before that, I suppose like graffiti was a massive part of my life. Uh, I worked for an organisation where we were organising murals for graffiti artists, um, funded by the Ministry of Transport at the time. We were kind of consulting them and then all organising these walls. Some of them like the, they were the biggest walls at the time in Australia like pre kind of the street art culture of recent times. And we had a show at the Access Gallery with Jane Scott was curating the Access Gallery back then. And Murder and Punch had a, a painting show upstairs and I was painting in the Coles Court in the, uh, the earlier version of the NGV and St Kilda Road. And yeah, it's painted like a two week mural, wow. like a live mural, yeah. And now you're in the W Hotel. So yeah. How did you get there? How did they find you? Um, what's a little bit about that story of that commission? Um, a, a, a super close friend, like from VCA days, um, Ash Keating, who's another you know Melbourne contemporary artist. Mm -hmm. um, we've been like really close friends. I've worked with him as his project assistant at MCA in Sydney for his Activate project um, and done other projects with him, and we're super close friends as well. He had, was contacted and was in the process of kind of delivering his work for the W as well. Um, and then, um, yeah, put my name in the ring for the tender process, which was then like taken over by his manager, Dave Hager. So I got in the tender process and then, yeah, like kind of won the tender process, which was amazing um, in like late 19, uh, 2019 and then went about making the work for like about five months. So I started making these black and white versions like, and these, these also became like a little book. Um, mm -hmm. So they're photocopies of like found images, some of my work, some of the things I was collecting like early on in the piece, like athletes running through like the picture plane and um, I don't know, like, you know, text behind things, like simple versions of kind of how I was working and then working over with like mediums that I was used to, which was like markers and liquid paper pens and spray paint, like not so much like traditional mediums from the art store. So I did, you know, this series back then with also like kind of pre-Columbian um, figurines that I went to Toyota Wakan in with Peter Daverington, who's a close friend who I met in the project that I was uh, like chatting about earlier from the early 90s for the NGV, he was in Guatemala. 
I met him in the 1994 and then went to Mexico after that and then was like just I've been um, I don't know like fat, more than fascinated I suppose obsessed in a good way with anthropological like history of Central America and that's been a massive story arc and that comes into my work and kind of outside of my work as well from there I started making like really the next year um, I made like a really kind of simple like not this kind of hyper dense version like with heaps of negative space and just objects place and then the year after that I made a series for the BCA grad show called Your Nine Worlds My Underworld which I you know I hadn't I, yeah they were like really well received and that inspired me to then kind of push the project on for the next three years and I made like 55 of these long linear strips mm -hmm. which were I was I've never shown them but I was imagining they'd be shown in like 11 subworlds of five. And you've used this work and printed it on carpet? Yep. Um, or tapestry, would you call yeah. it, say? How has that been? How has that experience for you? Like sh showing that work? Showing or? it, being in a shop front? It's, uh, well, it's like really welcome, to be honest, because you spend so much time. I have like over the years, like long periods of time alone. Um, so it's just the dialogue and the connection is like so welcome so it's like yeah I'm wrapped to, mm. to have conversations and chat about the work that I wouldn't have and then also we were chatting earlier like about like the commercial aspect of your art not like you don't you know I have a have a show I go to the opening then that's it I don't sit the gallery mm. and you just it's if you, you can have commercial success and good commercial success, but you also it feels a bit empty on a lot of other levels. It's a funny kind of space energetically. Yeah, and you you speak a lot about the visual language, mm. correct, in your work and what you're yeah. trying to do as the antithesis of what's currently out there. Is that correct? Yeah. Can you speak a little bit more about what that means? Yeah, I suppose I was probably touched by like the resonance of like things I saw in, in Central America and then I spent time in Egypt a few years after that and I've always been like fascinated with you know the, the resonance of like um, kind of anthropological objects and like archaic work and kind of you know, thinking about different cultures and then also the you know just being aware when you go to Egypt you know that that culture is no longer there like that civilization has gone we, we do amazing things but it's also incredibly problematic um, I suppose thinking about different ideas of time not just you know like archaic time and geological time and kind of exploring that idea um, in my work and not wanting to just replicate like contemporary like popular culture like there's enough of it in advertising and you know like American movies and I suppose I wanted to make work that would connect and that's I suppose the beauty of like painting or digital work like visually that connects in a different space that you know just might it's more nuanced and it's just I'm just trying to connect with people to remind them of other ideas about or or feelings about you know life and th these ideas that you know that I've just mentioned Thank you so much for coming on. We look forward to seeing your future works. Thank you. Thanks, Morgan. That's all we have for now. Thanks for joining us. If you want to contact us, please email us at info at We'll see you real soon. Bye for now.